So welcome back. Today in this uh, video, as part of the Azure Data Factory series uh, that you are following, uh, we will learn about uh, script activity in Azure Data Factory. So if you are new to this channel, uh, I would uh, recommend you to please subscribe uh, for this channel and also press bell button for instant notifications. And also you can uh, follow, there is a series of videos that we are uh, creating for Azure Data Factory and uh, in detail we are creating the uh, videos uh, individually for uh, different activities in Azure Data Factory. So I would recommend you to please follow those uh, playlists of Azure Data Factory. You can uh, get in detail uh, videos about uh, each activity. So today in this video, we will uh, learn about a script activity. So which is again one of the activity in uh, Azure Data Factory, which was recently introduced recently in the sense, uh, um, I mean to say like, uh, like in uh, previously like five to six months back, it was introduced. Uh, uh, the reason uh, why we are telling it is recently introduced is uh, before the script activity was uh, actually brought by Azure Data Factory, there were uh, other activities that we can use for the same reason. Like there was a lookup activity where using that lookup activity, where lookup activity we still can uh, perform certain activities. Uh, like say, if you want to see certain records, right? Like you can do a select star from a particular table and uh, give the where condition, filter condition and all. But the thing is uh, script activity is little more than that, more than that. So that is what we will understand in this uh, video, how exactly uh, script activity is useful in certain scenarios, right? So yeah, let's get started. And uh, as you can see, uh, script activity, uh, the theoretical part of it, right? Like it is used to execute common operations like any DML, data manipulation language, uh, what we call. Uh, so you can use it for a DML, like inserts, updates, deletions, where you operate on the data, right? Like if you want to do any uh, in new insertions, in, I mean, uh, and uh, if you want to perform any updations in the particular rows, so you can, those are, these are, uh, these are the statements that we call it as a DML statements. And coming to the DDLs, these are like a data definition language uh, where you, where it will affect the structure of a table, where it will affect the schema of a table or a view, right? So where you can use it for a creation, alteration, drop of a table, of a view, or a, let's like, say, a stored procedure, whatever it might be, which will affect the schema or structure of a, a these uh, physical things, right? And uh, script activity, uh, the important thing is to understand it is it will not be applicable for everything. Everything in the sense, all type of connector, all type of database, which is available, right? It is not uh, applicable. So then script activity is applicable for what, right? So it can be only applicable for only these kind of uh, link services, right? Uh, there are, uh, if, when you are creating a link service, there will be different kind of connectors, right? So these are the connectors which supports a script activity. Suppose if you want to use a script activity from a, for a blob storage, so definitely it will not, uh, it will not support because uh, it is not supporting uh, the blob storage. And if you want to perform some uh, script activity on SAP tables, so it will not uh, allow us. Only these are the connectors that is allowed uh, to be used when you want to take utilization of a script activity. So hope this is clear, right? So let us move for the next slide where uh, we tell like may contain one or more SQL statement which will be executed sequentially. That means uh, script activity is uh, can be used when you want to perform a single single st SQL statement, whether you are doing a select start from table or an insertion or a deletion, right? So you can perform one statement or multiple statement. It, it like one or more SQL statement you can execute and they will be executed sequentially. Suppose you are having a 10 SQL uh, lines, SQL statement, so it will execute line by line, right? So that is uh, the, I mean, that is what the script activity does. Yeah. And also it will give the output uh, of this, uh, whatever you are executing, right? Suppose you are doing a selection or you are doing a print, right? So print is a SQL statement, uh, right? So whatever the, these things that you are doing, so it will actually give the output of it back to your uh, data factory activity so that you can consume. Uh, for example, uh, when we say in sequence, it will execute. Uh, so if you are having a truncate operation uh, in the staging, suppose you want to uh, take a real time example, right? So you want to put uh, some data into a table. Usually what will happen, there will be a staging layer and then you perform the operation and then you put it to a main uh, layer, right? So in that case, uh, so you want to flush the staging layer and then insert the records into staging layer. 
and uh, then select the record from the staging layer and put into the actual uh, main tables maybe factor dimension tables right so this is a series of activity that you want to perform so in such cases you can uh, have like a three statement uh, for uh, performing these operations and it will be executed in series now let us uh, quickly jump to the demo part of it uh, so let us understand the script activity in detail so where do you find the script activity so you just go to the general general tab here uh, in the activity section and you can see a uh, script activity just here and you can just take it uh, into the design uh, pane right so now uh, i have taken uh, different examples uh, here uh, as you can see i have taken four script activities to explain uh, how script activity can be used in like a uh, different scenarios right so now uh, like let us understand the basic scenario right so let's take uh, where the script activity is used for selection as you can see we are just able to uh, select a few records or select a table uh, with uh, I mean you can have a where condition also here if you want uh, but I'm just want to keep it simple and just showing uh, how do you write a query here and if you see I'm selected a script type is query and there is one more option non query that we will see in the next activities but uh, like as you can see uh, when you uh, take a script activity so it will ask you to uh, select the link services and I've selected the link service uh, which is created on the database okay and uh, that database is having a table as you can uh, see I'll, uh, as you can run this table uh, in this database you can see there are few records in this table config table right so that is what uh, like uh, let me click on new as you can see here uh, in the in the theoretical part of it in the first half we were explaining right so it only supports a few kind of uh, connectors like sql snowflake oracle and synapse uh, like only these are the connectors that script activity supports right so currently i'm using uh, azure sql db as a uh, to show in this demo but you can use uh, another con other connectors also where uh, wherever it is required so now uh, if i just uh, Take this example of selecting and i use a query because this is a query right you are uh, querying the database and getting the results back so select is a query so that's the reason i'm just using that and when you type kind of a debug this to see what exactly it returns so as you can see it is succeeded in like one or two seconds and uh, uh, you should know how to read this output right so if you read the output it clearly it is saying uh, row count is two and uh, rows are these are the rows so as you know in data factory everything will be uh, shown in a json format right that's the reason the output of uh, these rows also it is uh, stored in uh, i mean uh, shown in json format but actual data is as you know it it is like this right one and customers two and customers v one dot csv so the same thing is coming in a json format right so this is a simple uh, this is how you can simply uh, use uh, to get the records from the sql database and you can use uh, like say uh, where condition also here. okay and in the next it is quite simple in the next activity uh, it is quite simple but uh, i'm just using a multiple selects here as you can see i'm just using multiple selects instead of one one select so just want to show you that uh, it will actually uh, work on a multiple uh, select statement also as you can see it is executing and uh, So as you can see, the second uh, select statement is queued. Let us wait for a minute. Wait for a second. Yes. Now second second uh, activity is completed, and you can see the row count is two. This is the one set, and row count is one. This is a one set. So these two sets are output of two SQL statements, right? As you can see, we have used two SQL statements in the script. So first one is output of first, and second one is output of second batch in the output of this. Right, there are two uh, sets of the uh, results that you got from two select statement. So this shows the capability that it can actually uh, get the output from the different select statements as well. Right. Now let us take example of the third script, right, which is a query script to select user defined functions. So as you can see, uh, like uh, I'm just using some user defined function 
like uh, if you are familiar with the uh, sql uh, procedural kind of a programming right so you will uh, write a you will define a variable there will be a print statement there is a if statement so it is how you define a procedural oriented uh, uh, sql right you can create a stored procedure with kind this kind of languages so that's how that's a that's the same uh, statement that we are using here and the only difference is here you are selecting a non query because you are not uh, actually querying but you are actually using this for a uh, procedural kind of uh, programming as you can see here to perform a uh, catalog operations like you can even perform select and insertion but currently i want to show you the select statement right to make it to keep it simple so as you can see the output of it right I'll, uh, just just show the output of this third activity which is a user defined function but it is not uh, it is not showing anywhere the print statement right it is just showing the uh, like few parameters of the and if you see result set is empty so why the result set is empty right so there is one setting uh, we need to enable which is very important uh, most people forget that is so we have to enable logging here so once you enable logging it will ask for you uh, i mean where exactly you want to store that and all right currently i want to store it in some blob storage i'm just giving some blob uh, area here test container and the logs yeah and uh, I will just select the same thing for this craft activity as well because here also I'm using non query, so I'll enable the lock, similar lock here also. So you can basically you can give any kind of location. I'm currently using blob. If you want to store in a data lake, you can uh, still uh, do that. Okay, let me kind of debug this. Now that the, now uh, the third activity is completed, let us see the third activity output. Now that the uh, pipeline is executed, and as you can see, we have given the this location right, so in the blob. So that is why it is being stored uh, in this uh, blob storage, and this is a run ID, and uh, this is the pipeline name, uh, pipeline activity name, and this is a run ID of the pipeline, right? And if you open kind of a C, uh, what exactly it is being stored? this is i've just uh, downloaded this from the blob and you can see there is a customer.csv which is output of that which is stored and if you see in the other uh, and if i kind of uh, just download this as well this is the output of the other activity right as you can see the output is start and end so as you can see the output we have given here a printer uh, started and that is what it is exactly showing there but you might be wondering why the output is not uh, getting getting shown in this out output of uh, the output i mean output of the script activity right so but for that uh, still you can use uh, there is one more option the advanced tab uh, where you can show to click on the activity output so activity output in the sense it will just show in the output of this activity but it will not go and store in the external storage if you want to click uh, if you click on the external storage it will actually store physically in the in your blob storage like let me uh, kind of go to this also and uh, disable the setting of external storage so that it will show in the output rather than uh, storing it in a block storage so now that uh, we can uh, go and see now uh, it is it is actually showing uh, uh, start at end in the output itself because we have enabled the output and disabled the external storage right so right and uh, so next we will go to the last uh, scenario how we can exactly use uh, which is little uh, we want to make it little complicated or just want to show uh, the highest utilization of script activity right so what exactly we can do uh, in the script activity we have combined all these things so as you can see you can literally you can write an entire uh, sql script like how do we write for a procedural oriented languages right so just we have shown this a simple but you can make it complicated to add a if condition like a case statements uh, and all other uh, things how we use how we use for a sql kind of scripting okay. so as you can see we are inserting a record here and you are deleting a record of some value okay and you are setting a variable uh, i mean uh, you are just uh, setting a output of a query to a variable and then printing it so these are all the things you can do and uh, as you will be knowing uh, so we don't want to explain in detail regarding this at the rate file name uh, this is simply means that uh, 
it is a user defined function a user defined a variable right so the variable uh, how do you define you define these variables like this right you just define a variable if you want to have a default value you can have it and uh, only the important thing here to know is uh, the direction right so as you can see we have uh, for id value we, we have given the direction as input that means uh, the we are giving the input here uh, to this this is the input variable and this is the output variable the direction is output that means it is accepting the values or a, uh, some data from a particular source suppose the file names right it is expecting some value to be assigned to it that is why it is called as an output uh, direction kind of a variable so once you kind of execute this and uh, you can see the output here uh, clearly it actually the output clearly shows uh, customer.csv which is the uh, basically the output of the print statement right what exactly you're doing you are actually inserting a value it goes and inserts and delete a value of id value so what is the id here so wherever 3 is there right it will go and delete as you can see the id 3 is not there because it's been deleted so yeah this is just a simple example but uh, hope you understood that you can how complex you can make the script activity to perform a series of uh, steps uh, to get your use case uh, uh, for a particular project or whatever your use case might be you can utilize the script activity wherever is needed so i would say this is one of the much needed activity that's been introduced by uh, microsoft and uh, hope you can utilize uh, wherever uh, is uh, necessary and you can also comment uh, uh, comment me like saying that uh, which exactly the scenario that you have used the script activity which actually benefited you right i would be interested to know that and i uh, hope it was useful and thanks for watching Keep learning, happy learning.